Since the South Atlantic island of St. Helena was discovered on the 21st of May, 1502, there have been a number of recorded drought and flood events on the island. The first drought was recorded in January 1699, with severe droughts recorded in the 1700s, lasting for months and causing significant impact to livestock on the island. In more recent times, St Helena has experienced droughts in 2013, 2016 and 2019 and there are predicted to be more drought events in the future. The island also experienced severe flooding events in the past with the first reported in February 1661. The greatest flood event ever recorded to date on island occurred in May 1719 which caused significant damage to the middle of the island. The historic record recorded by Edward Johnson reports that after the flood event, the sea around most of the island looks like black mud with soil, grass, trees, yams and stone wall carried away. Flood events have been less frequent in recent times with the last recorded flood reported in 1993 where heavy rains flooded parts of Rupert's Valley. So why are flood and drought events of importance and relevance and how do they link to the work that's currently being done on the island to restore the island's endemic cloud forest and improve the island's water supply? The first clear reference regarding the linkage between the cloud forest and the island's water resources can be found in the historic record where Robert Brooke recorded observations by the East India Company in 1794 which said, We are of opinion that encouraging the growth of wood is of the utmost consequence to this island not only from the advantages to be derived from it as fuel, but because it is well known that trees have an attractive power on the clouds, especially when they pass over hills so high as those on your island. And we are inclined to believe that the misfortunes the island has been subject to from drought might in some measure have been averted had the growth of wood been properly attended to. This understanding between the loss of trees in the highland regions of the cloud forest and the loss of water and impact of drought was significant and is the first recorded acknowledgement of this relationship. Recent research on the island has confirmed the importance of the cloud forest habitat for the island's water supply and developing soils to support water retention as the cloud forest brings water to the island through mist and rain capture. 229 years later, the St Helena government connect St Helena, the island's water utility, and the St Helena National Trust are working on a major four-year cloud forest restoration project, the St Helena Cloud Forest Project, which is funded through the UK government's Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. The project is managed by RSPB, and supported by a network of international NGOs and technical specialists to help restore the island's endemic cloud forest. This project delivers a nature-based solution which aims to increase the island's water supply and create peaty soils that will aid water retention. Wider benefits include protecting and enhancing endemic biodiversity and delivering socio-economic benefits for the island. So how do we use the experience of the past to help manage the island's water supply and cloud forest habitat to reduce the likelihood of the island suffering devastating droughts and flood events that have been recorded in the past? Well, understanding of the island's landscape, climate and water resources provide the information and the understanding needed to help manage risks from potential flood events and to counter the impacts from drought. 
There are a number of science disciplines which are used to help manage the island's water supply and landscape. These include meteorology, geology, hydrology, hydrogeology and geophysics. They help us understand more about the island's climate and how the island's geological formations, springs, streams and groundwater sources supply water throughout the year. For over 150 years, climate data has been collected on St Helena, with the most recent data sets recorded at Bottom Woods Meteorological Station. Climate data is recorded here by an island team managed by St Helena government and who are funded and technically supported by the UK Meteorological Office. Well, there'll, in theory, be more water than water that's being used. The team have increased the number of automatic weather stations around the island with UK government funding through Darwin Plus Project, D Plus 103, and the Cloud Forest Project. Climate data collected by the meteorological team is managed and distributed to a large network of organisations including St Helena Government, St Helena National Trust, St Helena Research Institute and international project partners. This data can also be accessed by the general public through the UK Met Office managed Weather Observation website. Good morning, can I have St Helena Maria speaking, how can I help you? One significant partner and recipient of the climate data is the island's water and electricity utility, Connect St Helena Limited. We're going to take a closer look at how Connect use climate and water resource data collected by the Connect Water Resource Team and Bottom Woods Meteorological Station Team to manage the island's water supply. When we look at the journey of a raindrop on St Helena, we can see that clouds passing across the island release rainfall and allow mist to collect in the cloud forest vegetation. This water then moves down the island towards the ocean in a variety of ways. Some of the water flows over land and into the island's streams. Some water infiltrates into the soil and then continues moving downwards into the island's aquifers, where water is stored for a longer period of time as a groundwater resource. In order to understand how much water is available for islanders to use, Connect St Helena measures water level and flow in the island's streams. This is achieved at a number of locations across the island where water level data is recorded on an hourly basis using a data logger located in concrete structures known as V-notch weirs. This enables the volume of water flowing through the streams at these locations to be calculated. Some of this stream water is diverted to water treatment works. Connect St Helena with the assistance of the Darwin Plus 103 and the Cloud Forest Project have been able to build a record of these stream flows throughout the year and examine the data to see how much water is available to fill the island's reservoirs and flow down the streams to the sea. The continued collection of long-term climate and stream flow data sets will enable Connect to forecast likely changes in stream flows over time and allow the team to assess any potential future risks of droughts or flood events. Spring sources are also monitored on the island by Connect where water level and flow data are measured through a network of catch pits. In several cases, spring water from these catch pits is diverted into the water distribution network for use on the island. Based on knowledge gathered about the island's geology, a number of boreholes have been drilled into the island's shallow aquifers. Some of the boreholes have submersible pumps installed which allow groundwater to be added into the water distribution network. Other boreholes have data loggers installed to measure groundwater levels. Staff from Connect use data collected from these monitoring boreholes to see how water levels change over time. 
This data is used to identify if groundwater resources have sufficient water for public supply and to ensure they are being managed effectively. The assessment of climate data, stream flow data, spring data and groundwater data are used by Connect to understand how much water is available at any given time for water supply on the island. For long-term water resource planning, this data can be combined with predicted changes in the island's population to assess how much water is needed in the future. Climate change predictions are also used to assess how changes in climate patterns will impact future water resources, such as our critically important cloud forest. So having collected data about the island climate and water resources, Connect then need to treat the water before it's used by the public and distributed across the island. Groundwater and surface water, collected from boreholes or catch pits and V-notch weirs, are piped to a network of water treatment works located at Hutts Gate, Level Wood, Red Hill and Jamestown. Water enters these treatment works and passes through a chlorine dosing plant which ensures that the water quality is suitable for public consumption. Once the purification process is complete, the water is then piped across the island where it reaches each household and business. The water distribution network comprises miles and miles of black, high-density polyethylene plastic pipe. One of the challenges Connect faces on a daily basis is the maintenance of this network of pipes to ensure leaks are detected quickly and repaired. On the face of it, this task is very simple. However, it's much more complicated than you'd think and requires a large team of experts to detect the leak, which in some cases can be in very inaccessible places. The team then do the necessary repair work, which can include digging up roads, replacing the leaking section of pipe, then reinstating the road surface once the leaking pipe section has been replaced. The final element of water management on the island is the treatment of wastewater. This is achieved at several wastewater treatment works on the island. Current systems are a combination of septic tanks and newly introduced treatment plants. Once treated, this water is then discharged back out into the ocean, where it once again forms part of the water cycle. Using the climate and water resource monitoring networks, developed through the St Helena Cloud Forest Project, Darwin Plus funded research projects and Connect's work, we can build a detailed picture of the island's natural water resources. The island team at Connect are using all this information for day-to-day -day water management decisions and to develop a water resource management plan for the island with St Helena government and other island stakeholders. The plan will help identify how much water is available for use how climate change may impact the amount of water that reaches the island. Look at changes in future water demand through changes in the island population and identify options for managing, storing, treating and distributing the island's water. Managing the island's cloud forest habitat is an integral part of this process as it plays a significant role in the island's water cycle, ensures island resilience to climate challenges and reduces the risk of flood events.